Hi guys and welcome to episode 7 of Sex Weights and Protein Shakes with myself Kirk Elliott, my co-host Mr Zach Khan. Zach, how are we pal? Good, we are good. Recharged and ready. Perfect. And we've... Again, by popular demand, John Hodgson. How are you, my friend? I'm doing very well, Zach. Very well. A very quiet, festive season. And we're back. Just Just, we're all in hibernation, aren't we? There's no sun, so we need to be covered up. Worst thing for bodybuilders. <laughs> Uh, you know what I've just been saying about that. I need to get a holiday, so I'm going to look. I'm looking somewhere uh, a little bit further over to the east, um, probably March, April time, something like that. Hopefully, you know the thing about it is crazy, isn't it? You know, if you think about it, it's been since uh, September since we last seen some sunshine in this country. It's fucking crazy, isn't it, mate? Like all we've seen is rain, rain, rain. A bit of snow, rain, rain, rain. Well, it's Britain, isn't it? I mean, saying that, we haven't done too bad. I mean, uh, you, you look at, I suppose last year was a little bit spectacular, wasn't it? You know, yeah, yeah. When everything yeah. brought back down to reality a bit this year. I think the main thing is, you know what? I always say to people, England is the best place if you're a bodybuilder. You can fucking train no matter what. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know how people train in hot countries. I can't fucking do it. You know what I mean? I actually lived in Spain back in 91. And um, at times it was brutal in the summertime. And I actually remember going to, uh, when I was out in Malaysia, and we ended up going to this uh, place just not far from the Thailand border. And it was a cracking gym. It had all the hammer strength and all that, but no air conditioning. Oof. It must have been about 50 degrees in there. I remember yeah. walking out and I actually took my vest off and I, rang, and I actually rang it out as though I had I just dipped it in a bowl of water. It was Me, ridiculous. It's like, you know, I'm used to like being in UK, you've got your hoodie on, you've got your woolly hat on, you've got your bottoms on and you're training. And as the training session is going, you start taking the layers off, layers off. But my God, when you're training somewhere like Spain or somewhere and it's hot already, and you're already sweating before you get to the gym. It's horrible. I don't know how people do it. You're going to be drained, aren't you? I mean, the thing is, it's better to be cooler working from a colder standpoint. Because here's one for you. When I actually used to do my cardio um, way back when I was competing, I, I used to do cardio before I used to go to work, you know, when I worked with CMP at the time. Uh, yeah. It was actually, you know, CMP, chemical warfare back then. And um, I'd get into the gym before anyone. And it'd be absolutely freezing. I remember doing getting ready for the Ironman and uh, the San Francisco show in 2003. So I was get prepping all over Christmas, January, February. And I'd be walking in the gym and it'd be ice cold. I'd just yeah. wear a pair of shorts, my trainers on, obviously, and that would be it. But then I'd work, always operate from a real uh, cold starting point. And that yeah. makes more sense because if you want to burn more body fat, you're better off being freezing, being cold, because your body actually shivers and it has to generate heat to warm itself up. Do you know something? God, so one second, Zach, so I'm quite the opposite, you know. When, when it's warm weather, I actually feel like looking forward to the gym. When it's cold, and I, and I see a lot of the gym memberships in, in the UK and not as many people turn up in the winter, I kind of, like, from a psychological standpoint, don't get as up for it as when it's warmer. I don't know if... It, obviously, you're saying from a bodybuilding point of view, it's brilliant when it's cold. Um, but I'm the opposite. I, I like it when I'm abroad and it's nice weather. I get up and I'm like, I'm going to train today. I'll tell you what it will be. It might not be more the warm weather. It might be the fact that the sun's shining. Mm. Yeah. So when the sun's out and the sky's blue, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. We're going to sing a song in a minute. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> hey, Mr. <laughs> New Sky. <laughs> uh, you know, but it's one of them. Um, it, it's when it's. Cold, we we have the dark nights, don't we? Yeah, and that's where the problem lies. When it's miserable, it's dark. I don't care what anyone says. You don't have the same enthusiasm as when it, it's a nice sunshiny day. You look at a winter's day when the sun's out though, and it's a blue sky. It's great. Yeah, I think I think Kirk's talking about motivation. Yeah, yeah. you're you're probably used to going to the gym and seeing all these insta holes with the titties and arse out. So in the winter they're covered up. 
Oh, I'm not interested in that. I'm just there to train. Your test me. levels are down. Are they down now, John? They come down from 26. No, no, they've always <laughs> been like that. I'm just, I've just finally realised as I've got a certain age, just control this shit and don't let that lot dictate you. Do you not think the libido's better in the summer, though, than the winter? In what? general. But the main thing, you know what? It's going to be fucking cold in Ohio and that brings us on to the fucking Arnold Classic. Oh, but yeah, it can be brutal out there. Oh, man, it's cold, isn't it, there? You know what I mean? It is cold. Columbus, in Ohio, my- the most boring place in the world. Yes. Absolutely it's- nothing at all there. Uh, I've been there boring. a few times and it's like absolutely you're thinking, what the hell? There's, so there's, for anyone who's not been before, there's no stores in Columbus. There's nothing. There's a there's an arcade to go at night that's got a retro games, which you're into that, that's great. But apart from that, it's rubbish. It's the most boring place i spent a week there a few years ago and i've just it was like are there any, any shops anywhere the nearest place is uh, somewhere else in, in um, ohio there's nothing columbus has just got the expo centers hotels and nothing and powerhouse gym that's it i mean obviously <laughs> I, I think it was it was it jim lorim who helped yeah, him he was yeah. so sadly he's passed away yeah. hasn't he yeah so yeah. is it not really time for it to be took to a more vibrant place possibly yeah i think I, so I think, you know, myself, like, you know, Arnold Classic and the Olympians, they would be great now because, the, you know, bodybuilding, it's a worldwide sport now. You know what I mean? And you know, you're you seeing things with, you know, certain competitors can't come into America because of politics and stuff yeah. like that. I yeah. think it's time to swap it around a bit, you know what I mean? Even if it's different states, like what the Olympians is doing, you know what I mean? Well, These- if you look, at, look at the Middle East. I mean, look at, you've got places like Qatar, so yeah. all these places, they would put on a spectacle. Why not? Why not mix it up? There is Arnold yeah. shows though in different countries, isn't there? The Arnold Australia. There was the UK one last yeah. year, but he's, he he basically gives that to a license, a licenses it off for a yeah. million pound. If he's attending, it's another million pound. And I think you're right. Uh, it would be good, like boxing fights. They go to the Middle East. It's a great performance, mm-hmm. but it's just still the Arnold Classic. I think he's tried to make it like a an intercontinental business scheme where it's each different area has it. But I think moving it to somewhere that's got a bit more going on, I think would just be a bit, it's going to be a little bit better than Columbus. I mean, because some people, especially with the expos just becoming less attended, I just don't see why people would want to go there. No, I agree with that. I mean, and if you think about the United States, there are a number of areas it could go to. I mean, if you look at somewhere like in Florida, or maybe Atlanta, you know, where yeah. they've got a lot going on. I mean, uh, you, you, you've got to think of it as why would people want to go? Not just for the bodybuilding show, but is there other things in which to, you know, sort of like be entertained? Mm. Yeah. So, like, you know, like, so. like John, yourself, you know, you know a lot of people. Eh? The reason they like Vegas is because they know there's bodybuilding for ourselves and for your partner, you can take her to the shows what are going on there. There's so much yeah. going on. So yeah. you want to make a vacation out of it where you want to go with a full family, you take the kids, you go for an Olympia weekend, you have a great time, whether you go to Florida, go to Euro Disney, go to Disney World, you know what I mean? You do other things. You just don't want to just do that one thing there. And it's like in Columbus, it's just got bodybuilding and nothing else. And it's like, most people will be thinking, why do I just want to go for just that in that cold Absolutely. ass? You know? I, think, I think it's just more for the American people, let's be honest about it. Yeah. You get very like, few people from the UK going. Yeah, and, um, and if the body really want to take anything out of the boxes, look at the World Cup, what Qatar did yeah. for the World Cup. It was the best World Cup, you know what I mean, organised. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, listen, despite all the, despite all the negative uh, connotations thrown at Qatar from the West, you know, yeah. and, you know, the, the usual lot. It, yeah. it was an absolute success. No trouble. And you look at the feedback from everybody who went there, you know, and you would it, absolutely loved it. It was a, it was a very... How many, and how many UK fans got arrested the first time in history? Zero. So just, yeah. just a quick one then. So obviously we're talking about the Arnold's location might be putting people off. 
do you think before this $300,000 prize money came in that a lot of the other athletes have been put off by it? Well, I mean, obviously, they've had to beg people to come by putting in a huge prize fund. So is that what the prize fund is now? For the winner, thousand? just for the winner. Yeah, yeah because they, I think they still have the ruling, don't they, that they cannot go above the Olympia prize money. Because mm. originally, Arnold was going to do that. and they, But they made it, they stipulated that you cannot put more prize money up than the Olympia. So say, yeah, say, was... say, for example, Zach, say for Olympia was in Vegas, it would have been hot weather in March, people would have been up for it, the athletes maybe. Would that have attracted more people on the prize money before? Or do you just, because of the location and also attendance, or do you think this is purely the fact that the athletes don't see the Arnold anymore as worth doing because some of these top boys now, because it's there's not a clear number one anymore. Do you think they're sitting out for the Olympia? Well, I, hmm. I, I would be surprised that if you, especially if you're talking like three hundred thousand dollar prize. Yeah. But before that, John, they weren't interested. People, there's only uh, Andrew Jack, um, Derek sat out of it. He's not doing it. Lunsford, um, there was there was Samson doing it. Hardy wasn't doing it, and then they put this three hundred k in straight away. Nick Walker comes in. Uh, mm -hmm. Big Rammy's now entering it. Um, Andrew, Andrew Jacks is. So yeah. I mean, is the Arnold kind of losing its way? I don't. I don't think it's losing its way as such. I think you've got to incentivize the individuals, and as bodybuilders, whether you like it or not, money talks. Mm. You know, it's a still. A, it's still. A, it's the second biggest uh, show in the world, and it's obviously proving the point, isn't it? As soon as you put the prize money up. Boom, everyone's going. It's a long way out from the Olympia. The Olympia's in December, and I just I find it a bit strange why people aren't just wanting to enter that because the accolades, you know, it's go down in history, Arnold winner. You've got some of the best pros in the sport, in the history, you've won the Arnold. It's like always you know having what? to get people to come in seems to be quite what difficult they, now. What they need to do, let's let's look at it. The Olympia used to be in September. Mm. Yeah. So you've got to really split it apart. And what I remember when I was speaking to Branch Warren at the time, he'd do 12 weeks to get ready for the Arnold, then he'd have a break, you know, he'd break, and then he'd have 12 weeks then when he'd get ready for the Olympia. And that's how he did both the shows. And I think that applies with a lot of the guys as well. Mm. And um, I think you know, time out, having a break and letting your body recover and that. I think the most successful Arnold Classic was a couple of years back when they did it uh, two weeks before the Olympia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was the COVID the, year, wasn't it? Wasn't it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So because they had to cancel it because of the COVID. Mm. So they did it like a, two or three weeks before the Olympia. Like, why don't they just put the Honor Classic like in, uh, do the Olympia in September and the Honor Classic in July? What, was the, what was the show? Oh, do it the, the other way round. Yeah. Do it yeah. the other way round. Get the Olympia. Yeah. And then you do the Arnold Classic. What was, what was the show called, that. John, that everyone used to do? Was it the Sheru Classic after the Olympia? And everyone, yeah, yeah. and that's when Gunter beat Ronnie. So no, Ronnie won the Olympia. Was, oh yeah, it was. Was yeah. it the Shiru Classic? I, I in, it was in like Kuwait no, or UAE. No, it wasn't. It was a GNC Classic. Yeah, it was a GNC in America. Yeah, in no, Paris. It was, it was. It was abroad. It was. It was in the UAE. It was a week. Always a week after the show. I'm sure it was the Shiru. It's when Gunter. Yeah, beat but the Shiru Classic was in India. Yeah. 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 But the what the show that Gunter beat. Um, Ronnie Coleman in was the GNC right. classic. Yeah. But it was just yeah. after the Olympia, wasn't it? Just after the, and yeah. That's when the Arnold should be, because everyone's still in shape. And everyone, yeah. if there was a decision one week where people thought maybe Rami shouldn't have won, two weeks later, they're battling again. And then if he won again, it's almost like bragging rights. But this it's long, like, long mm. term between the shows, it's kind of like putting, people are just sitting, like Derek it's, Lunsford's sitting it out, because he just wants mm. to spend all his time on trying to win the Olympia, even though it's his first well, it, Olympia. Yeah, but, it, you know, Derek Lunsford now, having come in second in his first attempt, clearly see, sees the winning line mm. right in front of him. So he's going to say, well, do you know what? I want to be number one. But so what if he doesn't win? Would, would he then, close if, he doesn't, if he doesn't win, let's say, he's, he's not necessarily going to win. Well, and then obviously looking back at his career and there's 300 grand at the Arnold... As, as a, like you said, bodybuilders' money talks. Do you think yeah. it would have been a better momentum for him to win the Arnold with Rami competing, going in then to the Olympia under the judges' eyes as being number one in 2023? It's whether or not you're asking. It depends on what you're asking you, you put your body through. He just wants to concentrate on making yeah. big improvements. 
So if you do the Arnold, you're going to have that interruption. So obviously he's, he's now focusing in his off season to put every conceivable amount of effort and time into the process of doing what he needs to do, then setting his pre-contest phase purely for the Olympia. So it's just simply, it's based on them. Well, I'll be gobsmacked. It can't be any other way because it's got to be for that purpose only. So but, 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 on that. but John, do you honestly think uh, that I've seen loads of people do Honor Classic every year and do the Olympia and they've improved? Mm. Yeah, no. I just think if it was me and I was Lunsford, I'd be doing. I'd be just shooting for the Olympia. I'd save all my energy. I'm yeah. off season. Off season is yeah. where everything's built. Yeah. And then, you know, all I, I've always like akin it to like you know, getting ready for a show simply reveals what you have or haven't been doing in the off season. The off Correct. season's absolutely where you put in so much of the effort. That's the stuff that people don't see. So you're yeah, but, in the way, and you then got then just it's pre-contest time to conserve the muscle tissue and get that body fat off. But don't you think eh, there's not many people with your mentality and Dorian's mentality what can do a whole year of off season focused on their goals? You uh, you tell me honestly how many people do a full season, full off season, and just do one short and they come back better. How many? Look well, at, look. That, well, that speaks volumes for me then. That shouldn't even be a discussion. If you want to be the best, you want to be the best version of yourself, you want to be the best, and you're competing at the biggest show in, in the world, that shouldn't even come into the equation. If, like, you can, if you can't commit to that, that says everything I need to know about you. As an do you think that's like, the difference between bodybuilders nowadays and, and bodybuilders from the past? Because they were doing like 15 shows a year, fighting it out. Kevin, Flex, NASA, all, Paul Dillette, all these people were competing month in, month out, European tours. They were smashing it and they always look fucking great. They, you know, it's like, what, what's the difference now in the mentality, do you think? Is life too easy? Is, is life to a point where people think that they don't want to work hard all the time? Is the mentality changed? Like, they don't want to have to earn, you know, the stripes and just kind of receive it from competing once or twice a year? I think, you know, there could be a number of factors there. You've also got to take into account uh, how much can the body take. But you know the, what I mean? I the, think these guys down, were competing, though, John, going, and they were you know, fine. The health was fine, really, wasn't it? I mean, they, they've all, you know, they're in the mid-50s now. The majority of them are fine. and They, no, they seem to that. There doesn't seem to be all these pros to doing like one show. I mean, obviously they've got to qualify the ones who are us on the top five by winning the show. Maybe this year. because they may be, be maybe because they may be earning, you know, money through other 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 alternative means, i.e., social media. The 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 ability to earn money now via, I mean, take Chris Bumstead for whatever reason. I mean, that guy yeah. must be coining it in yeah. with his yeah. social media presence and his followers and that. This was never around back then. So, there's, you know, it's like, why do I put myself, do I have to put myself through all these stresses and strains? You know? But, but John, ask yourself, what's it now? When, you, when you're off season, um, you're consuming X amount of food um, and then you're taking X amount of drugs and you know uh, somebody who's thinking to themselves, oh, I'm second place now, I've got to do more probably, that mentality. And so is he actually healthier than somebody who's competing two or three times a time? Because somebody who's competing two or three times a year, will, you know yourself, the last couple of weeks, you're taking fuck all anyway. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say that's the case today. No. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I'm saying you're, you're tapering down anyway coming into a show. You know what I'm saying? If you know so, what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, yeah. Yeah, but... <laughs> Today I'm hearing, pro I'm hearing protocols that are just, I'm just sort of like going, you're doing fucking what? <laughs> it's yeah. like, army. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I can see the argument from both sides. It's just that you've got to understand the amount of stress it takes mentally to keep hold of condition and keep doing loads of shows. You know, people will burn out. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Pick your fights. Pick your fights. Carefully. So moving on yeah. to moving on to the actual lineup. 
I mean, Rami's entered it now. First, it was Nick Walker coming. Rami, Rami's entering it. Do we think that Rami is dumb? Or because from his physique last time round, there's some flaws in his legs where his legs seem to be a bit of a funny shape in his outer uh, outer thighs. He's, he's, he's clearly he... sight injecting in his yeah. legs. Let's let's not cover glutes, up. Yeah. Let, let's not beat about the bush. No, you, well, he's, he's he's putting his gear in his glutes, and obviously there's mm. whatever his lumps there, but. You can clearly see this damaging, and it's identical on either side. Exactly. So what's happened is it's 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 it's, it's, it's tissue damage. It's, yeah. it's muscle tissue damage, and whether he's been putting all his gear in there or he's been shooting things in there to enhance so-called sweep, it's clearly obvious that 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 is permanent damage. Now that ain't coming back. No. You could see also he was. You can see he was sight injecting. And he'd enhance the, the appearance in his delts. To the to the critical eye, you can see where this stuff is going on. And and it, it stands out a mile to me. And it's uh it's do, do you think John, if you was prepping on Rami um, and you know, like Dennis Jim was overlooking him and stuff like that, yeah. saying, Oh like would you know, I think it's your responsibility of people around you, like your coach, your trainers, and right. people to be saying, like, listen. What the fuck are you doing? You well, know what I mean? I, like, I, me personally, I mean, I know exactly what I'd have been saying to Rami. Yeah. And I, I looked at him and said, you ain't doing this. Yeah. I would have been saying to him, listen, as a friend, as your trainer, as your coach, yeah. it's a bad idea for you to do this show because you're going to get ripped apart. So if I don't tell you this now, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a friend. I'm, I don't care about you, that means. But you know, if you're on your own accord and you still want to do it, no problem. I'll be there for you and help you out as much as I can. But this is what you're doing to your body and it looks so fucking obvious and people on the fucking social media are going to rip you on you also. Is there a way back then, Zach Ferrami? Do you think he's, Do you think this is the, the, the change of the guard now this year with he's kind of not going to come back again, which we've seen with Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler. Uh, they, they've kind of peaked. Do you think Ramy's done? Do you think it's time for some new uh, a new Arnold Classic champion? Possibly Nick Walker to win it again, or possibly Samson to step up. Go on, John. I'll let you answer. I, I personally am. I just don't see how where Rami can go. I really don't. His legs are shot. He's got. He's always had very weak calves. These calves are just nowhere near in relation to his quads. You know, he, it's. He's got no lower lumbar. His back back thickness and detail, it's just not there. I mean, if you're going to be, for me, and this is what we, I got, I brought a, a bit of controversy to one of the posts I did, and it wasn't being hateful, because I saw Heidi Chopin winning, but when there was this rear double bicep shot being shown, and or the rear lower number, not, not any of it, no one was really displaying that freaky back detail, even though go back to when Samir Banuk did a rear double bicep, it was freaky. Mm. You know, you didn't see that absolutely hard, freaky detail. And if you look at Rami's back, his lower lumbar had gone. Mm. There was nothing in the lower section of his back. And you know, people coming out with saying he's got nerve damage in the spine. Do you think it's that or they just don't know shit? Well, I don't know. I mean, only he knows that. But if he has, mm. then it's like, good night, Vienna, pack up. Go home. See, I, 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 I don't think he's going to win this, Arnold. I personally don't. I, I just don't no think way. he's going to win it. And I think that might be the kind of the end, really. Because if he doesn't win that, I can't see why he'd enter the Olympia. Really. I don't if think he gets he smashed. Got, no. He should have got 50 Sa at the Olympia. He beat Samson, didn't he? Well, there's no way he beat Samson. I, yeah, I don't I mean, see Samson's it. Not with... still, Samson's still got work to do. But, I mean, I would have put Rami right down the yeah. pecking order. Mm. I really would. Yeah. I, I, the only shot that he looks relatively respectable in in what in, from the Olympia is that side chest of his. I think the problem was with the, I think the problem John was with the Olympia judging. They kept him to the side and they didn't make him pause with the other guy. So people were thinking, oh, he's a clear winner. Everybody was oh, saying, man. but oh. but it wasn't. You always, have, you always have to be in the middle. Yeah, well, what they should have done was, because he was a reigning champion, they should have brought him in the middle, let the other people pause next to him, then move him out, slowly move him out, slowly move him out, and given him his chance, and given the fans what they wanted to see, then no, everybody... 
I'm, yeah. I'm not going to agree with that, Zach, because yeah. you can't put a guy who's not going to win in the middle. He was clearly left there because he was clearly fifth or sixth. Mm. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, being a reigning champion, they should have allowed that to happen. No, 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 I don't. So, the, you know, the you, is, if you're the reigning champion, if you're not up, if you're not, if you've not displayed the goods, tough. You ain't in the call out. That's the way yeah, I look at it. Yeah, no. but the problem, but the problem you got was even the commentators, like Phil Heath, was saying, "Oh, he's the clear winner." Well, then you, you, I know Phil. Need to get John on there, don't we? Instead, need to go to Specsavers, <laughs> mate. Hey, quick, it's a quick, quick, quick <laughs> question, boys. Quick question, boys. All right, so Nick Walker, Samson, Andrew Jack. Next year, or this year, 2023, Arnold and Olympia, who do you think is going to make the most improvements? And out of those top, out of those three people, who do you th- what's the, what will be the placings one, two, and three? Because I think these guys are kind of where it's going. I'm not sure about Nick's future development because he already seems stacked, but what, out of those three, where do you think the placings will be in what order? Like I think, Samson's got the most potential. You know yeah, what I mean? I agree with that. Yeah, Samson's got the most potential. Samson doesn't need to get bigger because if he looks at himself, eh, he's one of the biggest guys on stage, if not the biggest. You know what I mean? Yeah. All he needs to do is work, put sides on his weak points and work hard on detail. And don't, and you know what I mean? Don't play the size game. You, when you're that big, you don't need to worry about size. Look at the size. Guy stood next to you. Only guy really competing with him with a similar structure is Andrew Jacks. You know what I mean? And them two are going to be the ones. So, you know, they both got similar physiques like, uh, what's it now, Sean Roden. You know what I'm saying? If they get well, it yeah, right. I mean, uh, it does remind me of a Sean Roden. The only thing, the thing that he needs to concentrate on, and, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, well, Andrew Jacks, he, he's definitely got to work on his hamstrings. Yeah, both of them. Samson, basically, he's got he's got the quads. The quads are there. He doesn't need to worry about that. Have them there. If he can pack on a little bit on the cars, maybe. Just needs to bring out that back a bit more, a bit more back thickness. And like you say, beyond that, it's the detail. Get yeah. that condition. I keep saying this. Condition, condition, condition. I always remember uh, Kevin Laverone actually saying many, many, many moons about the talking, and he said, an in-shape small guy should always be an out-of-shape big guy. So condition has to be the one of the fundamental points that has to get nailed. And that's what's going to separate you from the rest. You're going to stand out. And if you want to be the best at the Arnold, the best at the Olympia, you got to have the, be- the best of everything. And that means condition. So then, so this, 2023, well, top th- out of those boys, what places have we got them? I think it's going to be Nick first, but I do think he's on the limit. I don't think he can add any more to his frame. I, and I've said this before, he, he's really hit ceiling point with the amount of muscle on his frame. He tries to put any more on. Waist is going to get yeah. bigger. He needs a bit more sweep on out of sweep on his quads, I would yes. say. Yes, definitely. You know, and if he can, he's got to bring that waistline in. If he can tighten that waistline in, you know, then it's going to simply bring the overall, shall we say, <laughs> uh, balance and a, a better symmetrical look. So, but John, but John, but saying that you're talking about just Kevin Levron said. A uh, in shape smaller guy will beat a bigger guy, but you forgot one person in this lineup, Sean Clarida, 212 mm-hmm. champion. Oh, well, he was in the lineup. I was going to say yeah. him. He was yeah. in the 212, and even Kevin Laverone said he saw him backstage, and in one of his interviews recently, you know, that had been on, he went, he'd have won the overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's doing he's doing the open in the Arnold. What is he doing the open? I tell you what, that that now makes it really interesting mm-hmm. for me. Because when you look at him, he's yeah. nailed hard. He's brilliantly put back. To, I mean, put together. He's weighing 180 pounds. <laughs> you know, and let's be honest about it. Okay, how would he fare with the guys? And I keep going back to the 90s guys. You, you know, you look at the guys back then. Forget the big, you know, the the, the names that we're all accustomed to. We have Porter Cottrell, Terry Terry Pastel. You, I mean, oh. it was absolutely the, the standard of them guys. And it wasn't just 
it was just the sheer quality, the balance of the physique, the way he flowed. Yeah, like Francis Bertetto, you know. Yeah. What I mean? So, oh, big, yeah. big question then is the two twelve division dead? Because you've got Haddy, you've got Derek Lunsford, Sean Clarida, all now beating the top opens. Where's the future for the two twelves, and will it get? Is it going to get enough interest moving forward? Well, I mean, or should it be mixed? It's always, it's always been the understudy, hasn't it? I mean, when I first turned pro in '99, until the the uh, introduction of the two hundred two class, which then became the two twelve, we were out in the open class. Yeah, and it was like you know free for all. But I, I entered a time where mass was being rewarded. As opposed to, you know, the, the conditioning side of things as well. There's many shows I went into and I was going, bloody hell. I remember when I, I, I competed against Gunter in the night of the champions, it was, I think it was 2001. And I got the pictures and you could clearly see I was m m way ahead of him. We, we actually got compared. We went out in twos and I went out against with Gunter. But oh, it's oh. like little and large show. And it's like, it's one of them. You, you've got to take into account the whole package. And that's why it's important for the judges to truly assess what's in front of them. Yeah, not not like who's taller or shorter. Not, not really, yeah, not to be overall by size. Yeah. You know, but, but to pause. truly see who's got the best of everything. Yeah, like pause for pause. Yeah. Pause for pause. That's it, it's simple, but I think a lot of people get overwhelmed with the bigger guys, with dwarfing the shorter guy. But once you start pausing, you know yourself how many times in the UK, overall champion was a middleweight guy like yourself mm -hmm. to win the pro card. Yeah. You know, I didn't win the overall, but I know what you mean Mike King, my, uh, Paul George won it at a body weight yeah. of about twelve stone or something yeah. like that. He was shrewd, yeah. wasn't he? Let's be honest about it. Sean Clarida won the won the won the pro show, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Mm. After last year's Olympia. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he I did. actually, I called that. I said when he entered it, a lot, a few of them, Palumbo and all that, were going, "Oh, he's not going to win," and I thought. You're talking bollocks. I, I, I said, if he comes in, nails out, I'll guarantee you the rest won't come in that condition. Yeah. So where do you see him then in the lineup then? Against them guys, I think he'll beat him. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's like Crazy. you. When I, look I actually honestly think you look and tell me whose physique out of all of them is in that condition and flows as well. It's a bit like Dave Henry. He was the giant killer as well, wasn't he? There you go. And I said that. Someone put a post and linked my name to it. I said, he's the modern-day giant killer. Yeah. You put him, I'd love to see him against... You look at his shape compared to Nick Walker. Who's got the better shape? Oh, all day long. I don't like that shape. It, for me, it's... Well, that's the longer. point. Yeah, it looks we're, like... We're yeah. talking bodybuilding. Absolutely. So we're talking about analysing hmm. the structure, Does it how it flows, the amount of muscle on the frame, and the conditioning. And for me, Sean has got the best overall package. It's going to be a very exciting aisle, this, actually. I I'm think going to look for it. And now he's doing it, I'm yeah. really... Well, you, then I'm you mentioned it. Yeah, I mean, not, I'm, I'm glad Rami's entering it, because it's kind of like, is he finished or not? And then you've got the battles with Samson. Can he improve? Andrew Jacks, I still think, has got the potential to be a Coleman when I look at him and some of his physique. Um, yeah, I think, he, has got, he has got potential. I, I, think, I think, listen, John, Every one of them should be uh, improving because they shouldn't be really in an off-season mode. So, you know what I mean? They're coming into a show where they just need to be trickling in now. You know what I'm saying? That's why so, I favourite Sean. Yeah, exactly. And the good thing about Sean is it's like he can he can come in fuller if he wants or he can come in tighter if he wants because he's got that to play around with. He doesn't like have to play the fullness game because he'll, be, he'll come in, raise a sharp, full as a house, but he'll have the balance right. Because he, yeah. he's not playing the size game. He can't play the size game. He plays his no. game. And his strength is playing his game. And I'll guarantee you this now. If he's on point, he'll win. Oh. We'll well, get this we're going we're to we're speak about the island again definitely near the time. Because this is going to be very interesting to see who else might jump in the mix. And uh, maybe, just maybe, Zach come back King Khan. <laughs> Might jump into that mix as well because you're you're training off season now, aren't you, Zach? You're gonna you're gonna give it a big shot this year. What's your plan? Like I said at the moment, I'm just trickling in. You know what I mean? Just listening to my body. Like John knows himself. You know what I mean? Everything has to be right. You know what I mean? You can't force your body to do something what it's not gonna do. You know what I mean? So you've got to train smart. 
you've got to be more in tune with your body. And at the moment, everything's going good. So if the things are going the way they're going at the moment, you know what I mean? Let's see by the end of this year what happens. You know what I mean? So, we, so we're starting filming with you, Zach, next week. Yeah. Um, we've got an itinerary list that we've built up, which the viewers have been asking for as well, what they want to see. Uh, training, yeah. uh, lifestyle, food prepping, all that kind of stuff. And hopefully as well with John, um, we're having a little chat about things that John can do from a, from a, with, with chemical warfare as a, a very uh, top like renowned said, trainer I'll... as well to help maybe give some yeah. of the people tips and, and uh, improvements think, on their technique. Yeah, I think it'd be good for, for me to come down to John's gym and he puts mm. me through a workout, you know what I mean? I think people would love to see that. I think people you know? would love to see it, yeah. yeah. Anytime, anytime. Man. You know what I mean? Because the, because the thing I like about John is like, you know, a lot of people get wound up because John speaks the fucking truth. And the problem is we live in this fucking walk, fucking yep. put by society now. You know something? I was watching Demolition Man yesterday and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> yes. we are Demolition Man now. <laughs> like if we say something, you get fined for swearing, you get fined for this. What Freddy, Freddy. <laughs> it's like, I I'm not going to change. I'm not here to piss people off as such. I'm just here to speak the truth. Listen, and if truth listen, listen, John, John, people choose to follow you on social media. People choose to follow me on social media. So, you know, if they don't like what I say, boo fucking who? Oh, I like, it's like, listen, you know the way I'm like, it's like this. I respect your point of view. I respect everybody's point of view. And if there's something I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in disagreement with, I will talk as adults. And we'll yeah. talk and, and, we'll, and you know what? If you don't come to an agreement, I'll just say, I still think the way I'm thinking is right. And if you're thinking the way you're thinking... You know what I'm saying, isn't it? You, go, you, make, you come to a stage where you just go, we agree to disagree. That's it. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's no need for fucking name-calling and fucking putting other people down and saying, oh, these fucking old-timer bodybuilders need to shut up. No, well, I had that, didn't I? I did that post and then that Jamie or Al came on. Um, I know one or two others called me an arsehole. And I just thought, well, sorry. But just because I highlighted something and I went... And I just said, don't fight me, fight the facts. If you can't come back with something, if you have to attack me as an individual, well, that's called ad hominem. You know, that's a, a weak ass, that shows how weak you are as an individual. But the, you can't but the, the facts based on what, what I'm saying. I address something, let's debate what I'm, I'm addressing. It's like this is simple, man. You know, pictures don't fucking lie. You know what I'm saying? Unless unless you fucking alter them to the max now, like they do nowadays with filters. The old pictures you know, of bodybuilders won't fucking alter. That's what the photographer saw on the stage, and that's what they posted. And that's what people posted from their Kodak cameras. You know what I mean? So, you know, you're posting pictures and saying, look at this lineup and look at this lineup. And everybody's saying, fuck me, the 90s, oh my God. You know, we keep going back to that thingy. It's what people see. People want to see the beauty of bodybuilding. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to see. They don't want to see the horrible side of bodybuilding. What they're seeing now, sometimes. I think what you've got to take into account is that a lot of bodybuilders now are change have been trying to ch chase the size game, and they've obviously looked at your Ronnies, your Jays, your Dorians. Yeah. But they're failing miserably of of, of attaining the size with the overall balance. You can go too far. Dorian did it. Ronnie did it. You know, yeah. when you look at Ronnie at his best, his best years were his, probably his first two years. 98, 99. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. He was harder. He was more streamlined. He had a tighter waist. He's absolutely amazing, though. Yeah, and he was tighter in the waist. So bodybuilding, you've got to understand it has to go back. What is bodybuilding? It's fundamentally about building the complete physique. Mm. The beauty of it, the beauty. Oh. You want people to look at a physique and say, wow, that's beautiful physique. Do you know physique. what the beauty would... of it is as well, Zach, is that you can look at Ronnie 1999 and say, that was unbelievable. Then you can look at Ronnie 2003 and say, wow, that is fucking yeah. unbelievable. Two totally different sy symmetries, same person, yeah. people like 2003, people like 98. And it is a choice, isn't it, of personal preference. Yeah. And that's what's great about yeah. bodybuilding. I could love a physique, I like a booty. Yeah. And you might say that booty's too small. I like a bigger booty. Train your booty more. <laughs> so it's like everyone likes different things. And that's what I love. And when people get angry about stuff, it's only yeah, because the... we don't see their you know, view of what they prefer. Yeah. 
problem is a lot of people are just thinking it's they're too fucking soft nowadays. It's like everybody's got an opinion. So you know what? Just because you the problem you've got is some people think their voice is more important than other people's voice because they got more followers. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the problem you've got. Too many idiots have got voices, powerful voices, but they shouldn't have that fucking, you know what I mean, uh, mm. position. They shouldn't be put in that I'm position. I'm going to buy two million followers from India and Pakistan. I'm just going to be like, buy <laughs> chemical warfare. Just buy my shit. Two yeah, million followers. Because yeah. you can buy all those ones. Uh, for the for the, the India Pakistans, I think you can... I was get, I keep getting messages all the time and you, I see people on their accounts when they want sponsorships and it's full of uh, foreign names from India and Pakistan that have no followers <laughs> and they've got yeah. like 23,000 followers to like sponsor me. And I look at who's liking it and it's just foreign accounts that are just no nothing but then yeah it gives them power, it? Because the, the amount of comments you get the amount of loads of followers but the comments it, are no, like, yeah <laughs> no it's a send a picture to this site dude or something random like <laughs> anyway lads yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap up today um i won't speak about the old get your opinions on it um john it's great having you on uh, every all the audience really like your insights when we've got you back on uh, hopefully try and become a, a regular every every couple of weeks have a chat about certain um shows think, that are coming up i think we need to have ask uh the fans need to ask john questions what they want to know you know what i'm saying so <laughs> any and john's not bullshit is there so if you need anything to ask mm -hmm. just comment on uh, below this video absolutely and also he's a very good analyst uh, analyst of physiques you know yeah uh, it, you know it's, it's very interesting to see the breakdowns where john's seeing it as well um and his take on you know future people we could possibly look at some of our team um how they're getting on and uh yeah. john can critique and stuff in, in the gym when we go into the gym tour so we definitely want to do more work with john i really enjoy him being on the podcast and john i hope you've enjoyed spending 45 minutes with me and zach chatting chatting shop. it's always a pleasure it's always a pleasure uh, no it's john it's awesome having you and it's good to listen to what you said because like i said there's only a few Last of the Mohicans you are, pal. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> Without the Mohican. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? We're going to get a Mohican for the next one. <laughs> get one. Get one. <laughs> yeah, get one like that. Yeah. <laughs> Quality, don't, boys. Don't, don't fucking change, pal. No, hey, no, listen, mate. I'm 50 fucking four. There's no hope for me changing. Trust me. <laughs> exactly, mate. Just keep doing what you're doing. And you know what? I just think, you know, now, Bodybuilding has gone in a full circle. We've gone from all these bands and these fucking stupid movements and people starting to realise, you know what? Go, go, go. What works? This is what works. It's not beautiful. It's not trendy. It's not fashionable. But this is what will get well, you... Well, as I say with Kurt and all that, We'll get it back to reality. So yeah. We'll show yeah. these people what's what. Awesome. Exactly, exactly. But the thing about it, the problem is, we need more people like you with voices to, you know, out of this stuff. No, I appreciate that. Well, I think, uh, I think we've got to work on that. Absol absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, John's going to hold you to that. We're going to get you down, and John's going to put you through your paces. Definitely, I'll love that. I'll, 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 I'm sure the viewers will as well. Guys, message, uh, yeah. drop, a, drop a message below the video. Ask us what you'd like to see or hear from from John, and uh, we'll we'll make that happen in the next two weeks. Definitely. Awesome. Awesome. Right, guys. So Zach, great speaking to you, John. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you, Kurt. Paul. you know what I mean. And I'll see you guys soon. Awesome. Lovely. See you soon. Right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next week yeah, for right. episode eight. See you later. Bye.